Greetings to all of my learned magic friends out there. My name is Jeff Kowalk, and you are watching Erudite Magic. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you and let you know that this channel is all about magic in the printed word. So if you love magic books as much as I do, you're absolutely in the right place. We got a lot to cover in this episode, but before we get too carried away, I wanted to let you know there will be a giveaway in this video. I will be giving away this book later in this video, so be sure to stay tuned for the complete contest rules and what you have to do to be entered into the giveaway. It is absolutely free to you. I wanna start off with a little bit of an apology to you guys today. I've realized in our relationship, I've primarily done most of the talking. I kind of want to change some of that today. Today is going to be more of a conversation, so it's going to require some back and forth. And the only way I know for you to respond to me through this format and channel is in the comments down below. I'm going to pose some questions today, some things that I'm not sure that I have the answers to, but I want to stimulate a thought process together so that we might educate and teach each other. In other words, let's become more erudite together. I've done some videos in the past on books versus everything else and how you should study books. It should be pretty obvious to anyone who's watched the channel for any length of time that I love books, but I'm not really sure if this is the best place for someone to start to learn magic. That leads to an interesting question. What is the best way for a beginner in 2021, or in the future if you're watching this later, to get started in magic? Your assumption is probably that I'll say books, but that's not necessarily the case. I feel like today's generation is learning magic more from YouTube and other social media than anything else. And the conversation that I want to have is, are you okay with that? I think there's a certain group of magicians who believe that learning from books is the only way that you should learn magic. But throughout the generations, I can say that magic for a long time was only taught via spoken word. You needed a mentor to be able to crack the inner secrets of magic. It's really only been in, say, the last 50 years that there's been a plethora of books available for people. Oh yeah, word of the day, plethora. If you don't know how something should look, a book can't really give you that. So that's a limiting factor. I think imitation is where everyone starts off. I can give you lots of examples of famous magicians who started off by parroting someone else through either watching someone in person or on TV, DVD, or YouTube. I know Eugene Berger talks about the fact that he could be Don Allen. There are tons of magicians who, although they had no Italian heritage whatsoever, basically became Slidini because they saw him or took lessons from him. I think the key that everyone looks for is that they want a magician to have to work for it. We all know that you value less the things you didn't work for. If you had to work 30 years to get your house, pretty good chance you're gonna take good care of it. But we all know someone who's received something as a gift and they've not taken any care of it whatsoever because they didn't value it. So it's not so much to me what format of learning works best for you as much as are you willing to work at your magic. I want you to let me know, how do you learn best I think that videos, DVDs, downloads, they break down those barriers to get people to do the work because you're spoon fed everything you need to do. Do this next, do this next. You watch the person do the performance and you can imitate exactly what they're doing, go through all the exactly the same motions. But isn't that how you learn to be a human? I have a Midwest accent, but I grew up in the South. How is that possible? Well, I learned it from my parents. I imitated what I heard them do. And breaking down barriers is exactly what you wanna do for someone new to magic. So whether that's inviting them to the magic club, teaching them a simple trick, or lending them a DVD, whatever it happens to be, we want more magicians. My personal philosophy on it is that if someone's not truly interested in magic, they're gonna to fall to the wayside. There may be some initial excitement in being welcomed into the men's hut, as Michael Amar calls it in his essay, but eventually they're gonna get tired of that if they're not truly passionate about our art. But I feel like it's a very low risk proposition. If they're interested, you've given someone a new passion, a hobby that can change their life forever. 
And if not, well, at least they'll be friendly to magicians who were friendly to them. It's a no-lose proposition. I know some of you got started in books. Your opinion could differ from mine. So I want to hear from you. If you were recommending to a young magician, let's just say 13 years old, how they should get started in magic, what has your experience been recently with getting those people interested and involved with magic? I think it's cool for people to learn magic from whatever source they have available to them. So if you're a kid sitting at home watching YouTube, go for it. I want to hear from you down in the comments below. What is your story about how you got started in magic? Was it a book? Was it a DVD? Was it a friend? Did you see a magic show? For me personally, I saw a magic show when I was in my teens. I had been into magic with some of those standard magic kits for a little while, but it wasn't really serious. Then I saw a magician perform, live and in person. It was a transformative experience for me. He owned a magic shop, and so the day after his performance, the whole family went to his magic shop, and the rest, as they say, is history. I bought a silk with a, <clears throat> you know, the thing that makes it disappear. And I performed that for everyone. As I walked into a restaurant, if I saw a couple sitting there, I would go over, make the silk disappear, and walk off. <laughs> it wasn't very long before I found out that there were online magic shops. Yes, I gave away my dad's credit card information to Hank Lee. Of course, I went through the same thing everybody else did. I ended up buying individual tricks on DVDs, uh, some things that taught multiple items from Michael Amar. He was the king of the DVD world back in the day. But one of the earliest investments I made was joining the Chaz Pro Book Club. Early on, I bought Bobo's New Modern Coin Magic, The Royal Road to Card Magic, and what child of the 90s could forget the magic of Michael Amar. So that was my start. I didn't read any books from the library. I didn't know that there were general books on the subject. I just bought my own. I was too far from any magic clubs, so I was never really involved with any other magicians until I was out of college. But I loved reading magic books. Me and a magic book, we became best friends. I don't know if it's science or just me, but I remember the things that I learned from books even years ago. They stuck with me longer than what I saw visually. Let me show you what my brain does when I'm watching something on a screen. I hate to say it, it's true. I sit down to watch DVDs or lectures and typically within the first 30 minutes, I'm asleep. Now I know that's me, I know that's not everybody. I recognize not everyone is great at reading or is good at learning from the written word, but I think that as it relates to the majority of magicians, Eventually, if you still love magic, you graduate to learning from books. There's just something about the written word, and science has told us that it engages different parts of your brain than watching a DVD or YouTube or something on a screen. I'm not putting down DVDs, but it is true that watching something without your brain having to do any of the heavy lifting does alter the way your brain takes in that information and stores it. I think that learning magic from books is a little bit like drinking coffee. What exactly does that mean, Jeff? Well, what I'm saying is, is that I don't expect my kids to drink coffee. It's an acquired taste, but most adults I know drink coffee. So what happened? Well, as you get older, your palate becomes more sophisticated, let's just say. You get tired of drinking sugary, sweet drinks like Kool-Aid and apple juice. And you graduate to things that are more sophisticated, more adult. Oh, that's so good. And I think that that's the way books are. I believe that as people continue to evolve in their magical pursuits, they'll become more interested in books and the secrets that they hold. There are some limitations to video too. I mean, eventually someone will have to move to books if they want to learn things like theory, as far as I know, there aren't a lot of great video resources that are going to tell you about theory. You're pretty much going to have to get that from books. That's why I'm saying that as you grow as a magician, I feel like you'll be compelled to learn more from books because you want to learn some of those nuances, the thinking, the history, and a book allows you to insert yourself into that routine. You're not watching someone else do it and thinking, how can I do exactly what they're doing? No, instead, you're reading an effect, a method, or a presentation and saying, would that work with my character? I think so, and here's how I could do it. Enough about what I think. I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts about where people should start? Are books still a good place to start? I feel like right now there is a small void because you've got books 
like Joshua Jay's Magic the Complete Course, which is a great beginner book, and it includes a DVD, so best of both worlds, right? Well, sort of. DVD players aren't as ubiquitous as they once were, so I feel like there needs to be some sort of book with a video download for beginners, or YouTube watch these tricks to show you how they should look, where people might get interested, then you can buy the book and get the explanations with it. I don't know, I'm spitballing here. What are you guys' thoughts about where the future of magic introductions and books should go? Of course, if you know somebody who's already doing a great job, please drop a comment, I'd love to see. I'm not as well versed on the beginner platform anymore as I used to be, but I would love to know so I could recommend to other magicians, here's where you should go to get started in magic. I gotta be honest, I think that John Bannon's Destination Zero is a great beginner book. Everything is self-working, easy to do. You guys have seen the review, or if you haven't, you can click here. I wanna give this away to somebody. Okay, so the contest rules. I wanna point out, YouTube is in no way affiliated with this giveaway. It's just me. I am complying with all laws and regulations. You must be 18 years old or older to participate. You must be in the continental United States because I can't mail this outside the United States. I'm sorry to all of my international friends. Plus, I just don't know the laws over in Europe or other places. Here's what you need to do. You need to drop a comment down below telling me how should a beginner in today's magic world get started? Should it be books? Should it be DVDs? And what was your experience? Doesn't need to be long, but drop a few sentences in there to let me know about your journey and where you think others should begin their journey. I think it'll be immensely helpful to the community, which is my goal. Who knows? We may get the next great idea on how to get more people involved in magic. I'm gonna leave this up for a week. So on February 20th, I will choose a winner randomly. If you are selected as the winner, I will contact you via the comments down below. So be sure to stay tuned around the 20th to see if you are the winner. If Sundays aren't enough for you to get your weekly dose of erudite magic, then join me on social media at Instagram and dun da da da. I am announcing that I am opening a new Facebook page dedicated to erudite magic so that we can continue to discuss all things magic book related. So if you haven't already, come on over and join the conversation at erudite magic on Facebook. I love to discuss books and magic with erudite magicians like yourself. All right, I hope this was a great discussion to help us facilitate how do we get more people started in magic and what's the best way in today's world to begin to learn magic? Are books still the best place to start? I think the answer is a resounding maybe. Well, that about does it. Please be sure to visit me on social media if you want to keep up the conversation throughout the week. As always, all my erudite friends, keep reading.